We've been exploring outer space for a long time and have built a variety of machines to do so. Everything has a role in space exploration, from the earliest satellites to the International Space Station and future interstellar transports. Hello and welcome to Z. Today we'll take a deeper look at the many sorts of spacecraft you should be aware of. Do you require answers to the major questions? Then why not subscribe to Z for more videos like this one and ring the bell for more thought-provoking information. NASA maintains a list of the eight different types of spacecraft it currently uses, ranging from flyby spacecraft like the Mariner and New Horizons probes to observatory spacecraft like the Hubble and James Webb Space Telescopes. Essentially, everything that enters space can be considered a spacecraft, even if its sole goal is to remain in orbit and observe distant objects. We're always coming up with new ways to explore the solar system and the universe, whether by improving on existing vehicles or inventing entirely new ones. And science fiction has spawned a plethora of grandiose goals for NASA's real-life engineers to strive for, such as fictitious spaceships that mankind could utilize to travel the cosmos. But just how feasible are these futuristic ships? What space solutions are the world's space agencies now considering? One of the most prominent, future sorts of ships on the horizon is one propelled by ion propulsion. This is a propulsion technology that uses an ion thruster to generate thrust by accelerating ions using electricity. Ions are simply atoms with more electrons than protons, resulting in a negative total charge. The amazing thing about ion engines is that they already exist and have been used for many years by NASA. Ion thrusters were used by both the Deep Space One probe, launched in 1998, and the Dawn probe, launched in 2007. So, too, did the more recent Double Asteroid Redirection Test, or DART, which utilized NASA's Evolutionary Xenon Thruster, or NEXT. Ion thrusters are a clean, efficient way to fly a spaceship and can be powered by locally generated electricity, such as solar panels or other sources. Astronauts aboard an ion-powered ship may even create their own electricity using workout equipment, as they will need to exercise anyhow during long space voyages. The disadvantage of ion thrusters is that they are extremely weak, so weak, in fact, that they cannot generate any meaningful thrust within Earth's atmosphere. And, while they can offer incredibly fast travel, they can also take a long time to achieve those high speeds. This means that, while ion thrusters are well suited for lengthy travels, they must be paired with other, possibly less clean, sources of propulsion in order to exit Earth's atmosphere or the atmosphere of any other planet. As a result, they are currently only employed on small objects, like as probes, and only once those probes are in orbit following an initial launch using a standard rocket. However, another, even more imaginative propulsion method may be just around the way. It's one that doesn't yet exist, but theoretically could, warp drives. Warp drives, like wormholes, appear to be possible according to Einstein's field equations. However, for a long time, it was assumed that building one would be impossible. A massive fuel source would be required for a warp drive, and only exotic matter was expected to fit the bill. To summarize, we haven't yet discovered the exotic stuff that could accomplish the job. However, in recent years, scientists have presented new evidence indicating that there is a way to build a warp drive without using exotic matter. All previous warp drive proposals, notably the Alcubierre drive, have been blown out of the water, with some claiming that a fresh design could exist today. There are still some obstacles to be overcome. For starters, the power consumption for such an engine would still be massive, and you'd run into challenges with how to constantly create so much power. What we may require now are more developments in nuclear fusion technology. And thankfully, we now have them. Nuclear fusion is the joining of two atomic nuclei into one. It's how stars generate so much energy, and it's the inverse of nuclear fission, which is how ordinary nuclear reactors work. 
For a long time, Tokamax, devices that employ magnetic fields to keep plasma stable as it is heated to tremendous temperatures, were the most promising means of generating nuclear fusion on Earth. However, Tokamaks have not yet reached the break-even point, which is the point at which they produce the same amount of energy as is put into them. However, a different type of fusion reactor has met and exceeded this requirement, the laser-based National Ignition Facility in Livermore, California. On December 5, 2022, an experiment revealed that it produced more power output than input. Still, this technology is a long way from being employed in spacecraft, but it may one day be used for warp drives. Of course, there are further challenges to overcome, such as the fact that a warp drive is unlikely to be particularly exact. Because it would be able to exceed superluminal speeds without violating physics constraints, it would be incredibly easy to overshoot or undershoot your destination when utilizing one, potentially by large distances. As a result, computation will need to advance greatly before we can really implement warp drives. But what about more stranger spacecraft? Machines that many people claim to exist and even claim to have encountered, but which science has yet to explain? People have been seeing unusual objects in the sky for decades, frequently in the form of flying saucers. These are the most iconic alien spaceship, the archetypal UFO. But how does a flying saucer work, and are humanity on the verge of creating one? Fascinatingly, as strange as they are, many engineers, including some at NASA, have been attempting to make one over the years and decades. In reality, NASA has developed a saucer-shaped gadget known as the Low Density Supersonic Decelerator, a flight vehicle that will assist humans in exploring and navigating Mars in the near future. The LDSD was first tested in the mid-2010s, and despite its extraterrestrial appearance, it is intended to make re-entry into the Martian atmosphere easier and safer. Flying saucer designs have also been proposed as a valuable tool in lunar exploration. With NASA returning to the moon in the 2020s, MIT scientists believe that a flying saucer powered by a modest ion engine could be useful in reaching this off-Earth destination. Because of the moon's much lower gravity, an ion drive might lift a light enough item into the air, and floating over the moon's many craters could be faster and easier than driving rovers over it. The extremely maneuverable saucer-shaped UFOs of science fiction, on the other hand, remain a pipe dream. We don't have a technique to make vertical propulsion like that. To see the stars, we don't necessarily need a high-tech propulsion technology. There are workarounds, and if we were inclined, we could send a big number of humans into space very soon. The difficulty is that many of them would never return. We're talking about generation ships here, another solution to the vast expanses of outer space. Humans on generation ships would have to grin and bear the distances rather than try to discover a way around them. They'd have to willingly sign up for the idea of spending the remainder of their life aboard a spaceship. If they have children, those children may spend their entire lives there as well. Traveling in this manner could take centuries, if not millennia, to reach even close exoplanets, but vitally, and probably more importantly than any other option, this one is at least possible. It would necessitate improved radiation defenses and larger ships so that people didn't grow claustrophobic, as well as a way to generate food locally, but it wouldn't necessitate anything beyond the laws of physics. Some believe that if we needed to, we could do all of these things extremely rapidly. And, if something were to happen to Earth, sending people abroad on ships like this might be the only way to preserve our species alive and thriving. Finally, the other form of generating ship is one that, like our other ships, is currently out of reach. People wouldn't have to live and die aboard an enclosed spacecraft for years if we incorporated a stasis mechanism, such as cryosleep, and they could simply wake up when they arrived at their destination. Currently, however, despite research into cryogenics, we are still a long way from being able to wake up a human after being artificially frozen. So another for the future, even if that future is still a long, long way off. 
In general, as a race, we will need to keep inventing and developing bigger, better, and more fascinating ships to transport us to the stars. One day it may even be necessary to leave this globe and travel to the stars. Will we be prepared? At the very least, the preparations are in place, because those are some of the different types of spacecraft you should be aware of. What are your thoughts? Is there anything we left out? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to stay up to date on the latest ZE content.